Hey, what's going on? It's your boy Brendan Berg, man. I just really want to, uh, really, uh, want to talk a little bit about Martin Luther King. I know his birthday and the holiday was yesterday, on Monday, uh, on January the 21st. So I definitely want to just put my, uh, my insight on it. Now, I actually post on my Instagram page, uh, you can go and follow me at, at Big Bird. Um, him and Martha, I mean him and Malcolm X, uh, I will call the two M's. They really wasn't enemies, or or they really didn't have a really a disagreement that was very drastic. Actually, they were they were very uh, acquaintance to each other. In fact, they had a huge amount of respect for each other. Uh, they actually appeared uh, in a Senate meeting uh, pertaining to civil rights, and they are they actually and they represent two fundamental um, philosophy and movements uh, that basically is black empowerment. Uh, but the source where those two fundamental movements come from, as you know. One is a splinter of Marcus Garvey. The other one is a splinter of Philip Randolph. But the the source philosophy is actually coming from uh, a brother, rest in peace, uh, named Huber Harrison. And he was basically dubbed the godfather of black uh, radicalism and or, or the black Socrates. Um, he lives in Harlem. He originally he's from the Caribbean, so he's not DOS. But his teaching and his devotion was towards uh, Black American DOS as well as uh, the African diaspora as well. So he was pretty much like the fa- like the father of basically of all the movements that pretty much a staple in black American DOS uh, legacy and through and, and throughout the diaspora as well. Um, like I said, he's um he actually his philosophy motiv- motivated two of the people that came out with the uh what you would say um the civil rights movement and the black power movement. Uh, and that's pretty much where uh, the philosophy kind of splintered, but it still had a core black uh, black empowerment. So, but like I said, they, it, it wasn't much of agreement. I don't think the only thing agreement was radicalism or being in a conservative nonviolent. It was radicalism or conservatism. Uh, that's pretty much was the direction that those two movements took. But the principal ideology was was clearly the same. Um, but yeah, Martin Luther King was, was very, um, had very amount of respect for Malcolm X and a lot of different, uh, activists at that time. Um, uh, and he actually started taking some view points of Malcolm X later, um, uh, in the later years of his life, um, uh, when he headed the, the Poor People's Campaign which actually dubbed into reparation. And he also had um, expressed deeply regrets about integration. He was really more about, um, he really just wanted to have government assistance of reparations of, of, of basically of wealth distributing, redistributing, and also almost like a self-governed almost with, uh, with uh, some assistance of government to lift uh, Black American DOS out of poverty into a well-established middle class, um, but yeah, it was it was like I said, like the when he started the Poor People Campaign, he was the government um, eyesore. Even though even in the feds and the CIA also kept tabs on doing his civil rights as well with Malcolm X. But, um, yeah, he wasn't, like I said, he wasn't the the I have a dream 
everything non-violent kind of guy. He was actually, he was about that life. He had a lot of brave, he was brave, he was uh, competent, he was very young. He died at age 39. So, at his age, he accomplished a lot. Uh, that I, I don't think any man or any woman have not yet to uh, reach. And I definitely just want to just just drop that um, that namesake. I will. I do want to touch a little bit about um, uh, Kamala Harris. I know Kamala Harris also announced her presidency on his birthday and at Howard University. And I really just like I said, I I looked at some of her records when she was a. Um, a district attorney uh, in San Francisco in the Bay Area and you know it wasn't very favorable for a lot of people especially a lot of poor people and especially a lot of black uh, black people uh, previously black American DOS uh, it was pretty much like an anti uh, poor people anti uh, black uh, practice that she had out there. Uh, also, too, she's trying to cloak herself in something that she's not culturally grounded in. And I, I hopefully um, a, lot of, a lot of us is not going to be fooled as we was with uh, Obama. You know, we're going to, we're, you know, if, we're, if she's going to try to cloak herself in the black American DOS, she's going to have to bring some tangible and some agendas to the table. Not there's a no go. Uh, I have no problem in sending this one out or voting for Trump or whatever. But you know, I might won't vote for Trump, but I might just sit this one out. So uh, the Democrats, like I said, they 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 push it for the immigrants and the DACA. Uh, like I told you, Hispanics. Uh, it's not. A unison block. They do not think of themselves as a unison block. Uh, yeah, certain groups of Hispanics look at immigration as as a keynote. Other Hispanic groups do not. Uh, like I said, Puerto Ricans are already citizens. Cubans they already get automatic uh, asylum and citizenship. So to them, immigration is not really much. Uh, really much to be discussed, but uh, everybody else, like Mexicans and a little bit under, that's all, that's pretty much where the immigration lies, uh, but like I said, a lot of people is not going to really want to, uh, it's not going, no, a lot of people is not going to want open borders, uh, they're not, uh, white America is not trying to be less white than what it is now, so you go out to look at that, looking at look that situation. But like I said, any the Democrats want if they want to get in into the position of the White House or any power, they have to they have to come with a black agenda. Um, also, too, I want to drop a little bit about that women's march. I know they separated, and because uh, they definitely want Tamika Maori out 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 the power, and. Basically, like, I, I mean, she's using this intersexuality, and intersexuality, and I, I, I just think that's the most dumbest concept ever. Um, it don't really work, especially if you are a member of a racial group that is the most oppressed, marginalized group in the country, uh, including everybody like women, um, most women, like white women, they're the most protected, most privileged group in the country beside white men. So you got to understand, and a lot of black feminists got to understand that, you know, feminists, they would never pick their gender over their race in any situation. They are not going to vote or go against their best interests. Their best interest is, is their men protecting them and keeping them in an establishment position. So them veering, that's a no-go. Um, and also, too, like 
like uh, Jason Black, um, he did it, you know, like he, you know, he said many, many times before, if you really, truly want to know what a black person thinks and feels, put them in front of a white person, as you saw in the view, when you was getting attacked by, I think, Megan McCain, she didn't really address her, or, or if she did, she was trying to keep it almost like intersexuality. What when she went to Roland Martin, she she quickly brought up white supremacy and, and, and racism. So um, that let that let me know right there is she is she 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 cannot pick her grounds and. She's losing ground. So to me, the woman's march, or the woman's uh, march, or whatever she's leading, is dead or rival. It, it has no grounds. I mean, they're already is is on the verge of taking uh, that over. Uh, like I said, they black feminists get used by white feminists as basically props. Uh, black America, and in general, get used as a props. And we must not be compromised in any shape or form. Uh, we all we, we, we must not uh, let people co-opt us in our struggle and our identity and our claim for their own. So that's something I definitely take a heart to. Uh, but yeah, I just really want to just uh, give my little insight on it. And I might just drop a, might come back with another video real soon. All right, one.